Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. So today we're going to talk about a basic approach to the neonatal chest radiograph. As is usual, you want to get a sense of the patient history. Uh, in the case of neonates, you want to get a sense of you know, the gestational age, day of life, et cetera, you know, birth history, things like this. Then we're going to take a look at the study and get a sense of any limitations, how much is captured within the field of view. You know, as usual with, ra with chest radiographs, we're going to look at lines and tubes, support devices, and then using an outside-in approach, the soft tissues, the bones, um, and then finally the airways, the pleura, the lungs, heart, mediastinal, uh, and hyla. Um, that's what we're going to take a look at, or the hyla. All right, so let's... Uh, uh, take a look at this neonatal chest radiograph. Um, a lot of these, because you know the patients can be so small, is that you'll kind of get quite a bit of the upper abdomen as well. Um, so, kind of really important things to get a sense of beforehand is really the the context here plays a large role. You know, you want to know the stational age of the patient, the day of life that you're imaging the patient. You know, was it a vaginal versus C-section? Um, these sorts of things really impact your interpretation. Um, any underlying medical conditions for, you know, known for the neonate, for the, for the mother, um, and, and, you know, treatment, have they been intubated, have they been ventilated, things like this. Um, you're going to want to compare over multiple pr uh, priors if they're available. Um, and then we can take a look at the study and see, you know, how's the patient position? Are we omitting anything? Um, are they lordotic? Are they kyphotic? Um, you know, and then you want to take a look at support devices, uh, and that's kind of like a whole topic in and of itself. In this particular study, we are not seeing, we're not seeing any. <clears throat> I like to start start peripherally and look at the subcutaneous tissues, and then you know, as you see, kind of the neck, and then also the upper abdomen. And, you know, an important part uh, just to recognize, um, especially in, in in a case like this where we see so much of the upper abdomen, you see quite a few bowel loops. You want to at least ask yourselves for like the major, you know. Um, you know, it's not going to be super common, but looking for things like hematosis and free air and portal venous gas and, you know, abnormal densities like calcification, um, just making sure you look for those. Um, <clears throat> especially, you know, it's, it's a good practice to do this routinely, but as we go through then the osseous structures, look at every single bone. Um, and kind of one of the first things I like to do is kind of take a look at the humeral heads and, you know, and see uh, if the ossification centers are present. That'll give you a sense uh, as to the patient age uh, slash gestational age that they, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, if, you know, in terms of prematurity, um, if they're present, they generally suggest that they're, you know, beyond what would be 37 weeks of gestational age. Um, then you're going to go through the bones um, one by one. Um, you're going to want to count the rib pairs. You're going to want to take a look at each part of the vertebrae. You're looking for segmentation anomalies. You're going to look for any sort of post-procedural changes if you know they've had some sort of intervention. Um, and, you know, it can be kind of worthwhile to uh, kind of zoom in and, and, and use windowing and inversion of the, uh, you know, study if, if, if need be. Um, what I like to do next is take a look at the uh, airways, lungs, and pleura. And so the airway can be a common... Um, uh, blind spot. You want to make sure you follow it down as, 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 as well as you can into the main stem bronchi, um, looking for any sort of filling defects or ab contour abnormality. Um, ultimately, you know, uh, then we're going to take a look at the pleural spaces. And, you know, in, in these patients, they're typically going to be supine. So you're not going to have the appearance of pleural fusions as you might expect on adults. Uh, you know, you can kind of, you know, there can be a hazy opacity over the, the lung. You can see it kind of peripherally as opacity. Um, and uh, so we're going to look for that. We'll look for pneumothoraces. And then within the lungs themselves, you know, you want to get a sense of the overall inspiratory, expiratory effort, and that's going to impact how the lung parenchyma appears. Um, you know, differing uh, levels of overinflation or hypoventilation, hypo, you know, can, can impact how you can interpret any, any findings. Um, you know, we're going to look for typical patterns of, you know, neonatal lung you know, airspace abnormalities like a granular pattern of airspace opacity, you know, ropey opacities or like a diffuse ground glass. Um, if you, know, you want to see are, 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 is any sort of airspace opacity is Apache, is it, is it diffuse? Um, what's that distribution? Um, you're, gonna, you're not just going to look for increased density, but you want to look for abnormal lucency, you know, as can be seen um, as a result of barotrauma, pulmonary interstitial emphysema, things like that. All right. Um, 
and uh, you know, finally having taken a look at the airways, lungs, the pleura, well, I, you know, I like to take a look at the um, cardiothymic silhouette, look at the size of the heart, look uh, look for the uh, thymic contours, look if it's uplifted, um, and you also want to get a sense as to um, you know the the hyla if they're you know if they're prominent if you're if you're seeing any sort of parabronchial cuffing or uh, adjacent to the kind of the central um, you know. Uh, like what airways and vascular structures um, and then you know once this is just a single view um, but you know well if if in those you know uncommon circumstances you have a lateral you'll approach it in a similar kind of outside in approach as is generally typical of um, you know that uh, as similar to as in the adult um, and kind of the last sort of check is that uh, you want we want to make sure we're not missing kind of major life threatening things, misplaced tubes and lines, um, you know, abnormal air in different areas, uh, incidentally seeing pneumatosis in the abdomen, kind of things like that are kind of important just to, as we're closing out the study to remember to look at. All right, so just in summary, in approach to the neonatal chest radiograph, um, kind of a basic you know introduction here is that it's really important to have a sense of the overall course of the patient's care up to that point, you know, how, how, you know, what day of life we're imaging them at, what was the birth history, what was the, what are some, you know, any sort of essential maternal comorbidities, things that can impact how we're going to look at this. Take a look at, you know, are we, how much of this patient are we actually seeing, or how, how are they positioned, what is the inspiratory effort for the limitations. You want to check each line and tube, um, you know, um, and there's, you know, quite a few different things that we can, you know, take a look at. So that's like its own topic that requires, you know, some depth. Uh, and then we'll be using an outside in approach. We'll look at subcutaneous tissues, the upper abdomen. We'll look at the bones. We'll survey looking for primarily infants, um, kind of congenital or, you know, uh, sort of abnormalities. But in some circumstances, you may see, you know, um, unfortunately post-traumatic or incidental, uh, you know, other focal lesions. And then typically we'll do in, doing kind of like a airways, lungs, uh, pleura, uh, looking at those and looking for um, you know, distinct patterns, you know, classic patterns of lung parenchymal abnormalities. And then finally looking at the heart, um, you know, the heart contours, the thymic contours, the mediastinal, the, the hyla, uh, and then making sure that we are uh, not missing anything big uh, on the last, on the last check. Uh, and that basically covers um, kind of the major things you want to think about for the neonatal chest radiograph.